What's up, you guys? I don't know if you guys remember, but it was like years ago where I was, um, how do I say this? I participated in a math contest. If you remember a long time ago, this uh, Femboy Math Tournament in VR chat. I did have a second one. I'll, that'll be in the near future. But here, I only want to focus on one problem. The reason why I want to focus on this one problem is because this problem has actually haunted me for almost, well, even till today. <laughs> even till today. Even knowing the solution. Well, I don't know the solution. But I know the concept of it. And it still haunts me till this day. It haunts me because of how nasty it scarred me to how disgusting it was to work with. It was awful. It was an awful combinatorics problem where it's oh man. Let's let's just let's just begin with, with what this problem says, right? Right here. This this problem has haunted me in my sleep, it has haunted me in my dreams, it has haunted me in my shower when I eat. Um it has haunted me when I study. It is it has it haunts me everywhere it is just it just kind of bugs me in my mind like how on earth does one person solve this in minutes i don't know but well actually i do know now but i still don't understand the solution to this but let's just go over what this problem says right there are eight femboys in the sleepover sitting together in a circle and they each ubered a bag of food unfortunately everyone's bag was unidentifiable and the food would be easy to find if the person's food was in their own hand or someone on their left or someone with the, on their right. When one person got up and randomly distributed the bag to everyone in the circle, what is the probability that everyone's food was easy to find? So let me just draw this out for you so that you understand why this problem is so nasty. I'm just going to draw circles because I am very lazy to draw literally eight them boys. This is not a circle, um, <laughs> but let's just pretend it is. Okay, so of course everyone's food is unidentifiable, right? They all look the same, same bag or something, whatever, right? And let's say this food here, right? Each food or whatever is easy to find if it's on their hands or on their neighbors. Right, left or right. If we just randomly just distribute the bags to everyone, what is the probability that um, that everyone's food was easy to find? Now, obviously, the whole total would be like what eight factorial? Yeah, it would be like eight factorial. It'd be one here, 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 or one here. So that's like eight cases, right? Eight. And then when there's one bag in one person, then you have seven left, then you have six left. All right, that's that's why the whole total is eight factorial. Okay. Now, that's the easy stuff. The hard part is counting how many ways for it to be uh, easy to find. Now, I thought this was easy. I thought this problem was easy because I was like, well, wait a second. If I want everyone's food to be easy to find, right? If a one femboy has their own food, right, then what that means is uh, they could just pass it everyone to the left, right? If this was the case, right, one person passes to the left and this person passes to the left, then everyone has to pass it to the left. Otherwise, everyone's food would not be easy to find. Does that make sense? Right? There has to be a rotation, right? If this is the case, you, this person can't have their food like here, right? Obviously. So, and it can't be, this person can't have their food here because this person already has this person's food. So that's why I thought, okay, so it's just everyone having their food, rotation to the left and rotation to the right. So I thought it was only three. And I was very suspicious. I'm like, now wait a second, that's too easy, right? Why would this be in a competition problem? Why why would this question even be proposed here? Right? There's something I'm missing. I am missing something. 
and I was, I was missing something. What I didn't realize is that you can do a trade. So you can have a trade partner, right? That you can swap your food and it's still considered easy to find. Everyone else can have their own food on their lap. Oh god, this. This is where I started freaking out. I was like, okay. And then I just need to do like, what? Like casework? Alright, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Okay. So I just have to count for eight cases. Alright, so it's three plus eight. No biggie. But then I realized you can also have two groups of two partners. And I'm just like, okay. So that's like one, two, uh, three, and then up to, I believe, eight as well. You can have up, and it's not, that's only not just that. Like, I thought, okay, just this, this, you know, there's, you know, eight, and then for four groups, it's like, what? One, two, that's it? Okay, easy peasy, what? All right. And then I've completely forgot. This could be wrong. I actually don't know if this is even correct. But <laughs> this is just the, I'm just giving you the conceptual idea of what I was going through. And I completely forgot that you can have configurations like this. And then you have to rotate. Or you can even have configurations like this. And you have to be careful not to overcount certain configurations. And I, this, this is where I started freaking out. I'm like, oh no, this is nasty. <laughs> like, yo, I don't want to go through this. So I'm like, okay, that's like, what, plus two, eight more, plus 16 because of mirror cases? I don't know. Then we have one here, skip two, one here. Okay, so it's like one, one, two, three, four, in the same case. So I think that's four cases for this configuration. And then I realized you can have this configuration. <laughs> you guys, this is so nasty. <laughs> I, I was just like, oh god, do I really have to count? All of this so all right this is like eight I want to let you guys know I only had five minutes to solve this problem it was awful I don't know how the computer programming fanboys do it but this was just I was just baffled I I no no ain't no way a computer programmer can solve this in five minutes I refuse so okay so this was an extra eight I think that's it is, this, is that it did I just got it? Did I actually got this right? Wait, 32. I feel like I did. I think I missed. I think I overcounted. I feel like I overcounted here with um, this. With this. I might have overcounted because I feel like there's certain constructions. I probably did overcount it. Yeah, I think I did overcount. Is that the answer? Is the answer 49? 49 over 8 factorial? Is that the... Is that the probability answer? I don't know. <coughs> For some reason, I suddenly got the answer. Um, I have no idea. I don't know. I feel like I did that incorrectly. Anyways. Disgusting. Right. It's awful. Awful. Okay. Now, yes, I ran out of time. I didn't get to the answer because I was I, I kept freaking out. I'm like, this is too nasty. I don't know if I want to do this. Uh, but yeah, that was that, that's literally the whole problem. And um, yeah, how on earth does one person do it in minutes without uh, bashing everything through?
this this problem has been bugging me so much. I decided to ask Berkeley Math Tournament organizers this problem. They answered it like in one less than a minute, and I'm just like, how? How the hell do you solve this? Now again, I don't know the entire full solution, but here's what the concept of it is. The number of ways where everyone's food was easy to find is the sum of Fibonacci numbers. Where did the Fibonacci come from? Like, I, I have no idea, but uh, apparently the, the probability is the sum of some sort of Fibonacci number. It's not n equals something. It's like for certain, uh, for certain n cases, or I don't know. I have no idea. I don't really blame them because it's it's one of those things where it's like you just need. It's like it requires prerequisite knowledge. You know, like it's hard to explain the solution if you never have any Olympiad background. So that's kind of understandable, and I think that's what this is. It's like I can't understand the solution because it's one of those things where it's like. Like Olympiad combinatoric topics that you have to know first in order to understand the solution. So, but yeah, I have no idea. I don't, I I don't know where Fibonacci's come from. I feel like it's like um like casework, right? We know three is a Fibonacci number, right? And that comes from rotations, and then we have some Fibonacci number that represents this case, some Fibonacci number that represents a case for two. And a Fibonacci number that re represents a case for three, and a Fibonacci number that cases that represents the case for uh, four groups of four, and then you add these all these up, and then you have your answer, right? So I don't know. I uh, and I now I think about it, it makes sense because I have been counting, right? You you've seen me done like this on this on the corner, right? And if you realize, you know, eight is a Fibonacci number, um. Four is not a Fibonacci number. I have no idea. I don't know where the Fibonacci number come from, but apparently that was the fastest solution is to utilize Fibonacci numbers. I feel like it's something to do with generating numbers. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know anything about Olympic combinatorics. This is disgusting. This haunted me for a long period of time. I just cannot believe they would throw such a thing at me. <laughs> but huge props to the BMT organizers for solving this very quickly because holy hell, I would have not, <laughs> I would have never, I'd freak out. Bashing this is nasty. I even posted this uh, somewhere else. Someone, oh, oh god, I'm, I almost threw up just thinking about it. Someone used combinatorials, and it was just a bunch of this. It's a a bunch of this, and I was. Oh god. It was a long scratch work and I was someone actually bashed with combinatorials and I was just like there has to be <laughs> there has to be a nicer fast way. And I believe the fastest way is literally just the sum of Fibonacci numbers. Where such n represents some sort of casework. I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with partitions. Maybe it's something to do with I don't know. I would have never guessed or even imagined yeah, having to use Fibonacci numbers with circular permutation. I don't know. If you can explain why this has something to do with Fibonacci numbers, please make a video of it. I would love to watch an explanation of this problem, please, because it still haunts me to this day. I just wanted to share this because this, this, this was nasty. <laughs> Okay, and honestly, you might be right. It could have been worse. <laughs> what do you? Expect? It's a combinatorics problem. It could have been so much worse. Uh, are there other nastier problems? Yes, yes. Where was it? There was nastier problems, which I will probably show and save for future videos, like this problem here. This was nasty. Um, This was nasty. 
Oh no 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 no! This is a pigeonhole problem. No, where which where was it? There was there was another one where you have to like sort like digits or something like that. Where was it? Okay, but yeah, this one was nasty. Um. Where was it? There's another there was a disgusting one where it was just like Okay, this one, this one was trippy. This was trippy. Um This one, this was nasty. This this was disgusting. I God, yeah. This haunted me. Okay, problem fifty four. Problem fifty four from twenty nine. Yeah. Those two those are probably like those those two problems I'll save for a future video because those those haunted me as well they were also nasty and disgusting I refuse to believe a programmer can do mathematics like this there's there's no way why would a programmer need to know how to solve these kind of problems oh my god Ugh. anyhow that's it I'll save those two ugly problems for later. Uh, the other two problems that also haunted me, which I have no idea and understand how to solve it. Uh, other than that, yeah, I would love to see an explanation because <laughs> it bothers me to this day. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think I've suffered enough. Um, <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.